Morning Drive, presented by Rolex. And good morning. Welcome to Morning Drive, Tuesday, May the 9th, the year 2017. This is Studio A, David Hack alongside a three-time PGA Tour winner and Chris DeMarco, the rest of the gang, and just a little bit happy Players Championship Tuesday, buddy. What's on your mind? This is work day for the players today. Mm. They're out there grinding. They're getting to know the course. They're feeling out the new holes, all the different changes. So it's a big work day. Well, Bubba Watson was getting worked over yesterday. Did you see the social media video? I the, did, yeah. We're used to the green jacket, not the green slime on a little Nickelodeon love. Looks like he had a little fun with that, though. I like it. You like that? Would you do that? Yeah, why depends, not? It might depend on the zeros that come after that. Yeah. That was fun. Bubba always has a lot of fun. Now, speaking of a two-time major champ, how about another two-time major champ? John Daly, fresh off his first win on PGA Tour Champions. That's the kind of That's slime the kind of shower you I want, want right again. There. I like that shower better. Lauren Thompson, what do you have? <laughs> Champagne or slime. That's not a toss-up whatsoever. Well, more good things on the way. A live check-in with Dr. Ara Sapai, who's once again on site at the Players. He's been a part of professional golfers teams for years years. And while surrounding himself with his clients and their competitors, he's come across an interesting discovery. Dr. A is going to dive into three particular characteristics held by champions, including the defender of the players this week, Jason Day. He's going to tell you what these keys are and share the stories to back it up. But that's not all we've got going on as we're going to take you outside of the studio to Gary Williams. Good morning, GW. How you doing? I'm doing great, Lauren. You know, there have been major renovations to the stadium course. We will have all the details with our Matt Janella and Jeff Shackelford. Well, where am I? I'm in the parking lot of the world headquarters of Golf Channel. And we get a daily reminder of where we are with respect to all the great landmarks around the world of golf. Where are we in relation to the stadium course? 121 miles, I-4 to I-95, exit 329. Let's go there right now and say good morning to our car Robinson. Thank you, Gary. Yes, we have driven up the coast to Pontevedra Beach, where we are at the Pete Dye Design Stadium course for this, the 44th edition of the Players' Championship. And while much has changed at TPC Sawgrass since we were here a year ago, the course Gary mentioned has undergone a significant renovation to all 18 holes, and the practice facility here as well has increased by about 35% in size. We'll get into all of that, as he said, but good morning, Kai Robinson alongside Charlie Reimer and a man who has competed in a considerable number of players championships <laughs> finishing in the top three twice john cook uh, morning guys morning. cookie you you said you've had a pretty good run around this track tied for the lead on the 18th team yeah. one year what is it about this event that makes the players so special it's just a big event this is uh, the players showcase this is what we do this is where our our dues go this is our home this is our locker room this is our practice facility it's just a big event in a big town and uh, it, it's meant a lot to this area it, uh, it it's generated you know, just hundreds of millions and billions of dollars of funds. It's just a big event, and, and we're very proud of, of having, you know, being this, the Players' Championship is just that. It's the for the players. Charlie, 22 winners, all of them, on the tour this season, and 48 of the top 50 in the official World Golf Ranking are in the field. Year after year, this continues to be the strongest field of the season. Why is that? Well, it, it's, it's, as John says, uh, this, um, as a PGA Tour member, you tee it up here, and I had a chance to play once, you feel like like uh, it's it's your facility. The players have a sense of ownership. I mean, PGA Tour headquarters are just a few hundred yards from where we're sitting right now, and, and it's almost like you're coming home in a sense. Uh, and I'll tell you the other thing: this golf course over the years has done a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing stage. Uh, we'll get into it a little bit later in the show, but it doesn't favor any particular style of player. That's really important because again, the players <laughs> own the tour. If if you have a golf course where every year you look at it and and just as short hitters win, that's not going to work well with the long hitters. You have a golf course that just the long hitters win, well, the short hitters aren't going to like that. Throughout its history, we've had the longest in the game win, and we've had the shortest and most accurate in the game win. It's all you can ask for, I think, John, in a test. We're going to get a little bit more into that topic later on in today's show, but let's get to what is happening now. And tee times for Thursday and Friday rounds were released yesterday, with both Sergio Garcia and Rory McIlroy making their first start since the Masters five weeks ago. They were bound to be some good groupings. So, guys, Charlie, I'll start with you. Which one are you keeping your eye on? Well, there's a lot to choose from, certainly. I mean, we really have some, some wonderful groupings, but my eye is drawn to that grouping that includes Sergio Garcia. Uh, we got three past winners of this championship in there with uh, Matt Kuchar, who 
Uh, the year that he won 2012, only two players in the field hit more greens than he did. Adam Scott, the winner in 2004, uh, he led the field in greens and regulation. And when Sergio won here in 2008, he also led the field in greens and regulation. You see where I'm going there? <laughs> to play well this week, you got to hit a lot of greens, and these three can do it. Uh, in particular, Sergio. What are we going to see from Sergio after his Masters win? Uh, a lot of times, especially when it comes late in a career, you, you see a major championship be the last win for a player. So that's certainly a possibility. I don't think that's what we're going to see with Sergio. But in all honesty, what I see for Sergio this year is a little bit of a victory tour. It's a life-changing year for Sergio. He's getting married this summer. Uh, and think about all the heartache and heartbreak that he's had in major championships. I think it's only human to maybe breathe a little bit to enjoy the win. I, I think for Sergio, this year is going to be about having fun, about getting used to life as a major champion, about getting used to married life. I think next year, a Ryder Cup year, we'll see Sergio refocus and get back to playing uh, some amazing golf. I don't think the Masters will be his last win, and I don't think it'll be his last major championship, but I don't see a lot of great golf coming from Sergio the rest of this year. Interesting, Charlie. You don't think Sergio is going to return with the kind of form that saw him win the green jacket five weeks ago. With that in mind, then, Cookie, who are you going to be looking out for this week? Well, this, this pairing is worth the price of admission right here. We got Rory McIlroy, Justin Thomas, and Dustin Johnson. I mean, that's, uh, wow. <laughs> you know, the golf course, it doesn't, you know, really reward that much power. There's going to be a lot of power going on in this one. And, you know, Roy McIlroy has got a new set of clubs in the bag. That'll take him literally one or two practice sessions to get used to that. Uh, he's always very solid tee to green here at uh, TPC Sawgrass. Doesn't have to putt great around here, but he just you know he needs to manage his game around this golf course, and he'll be just fine. Uh, Justin Thomas looking to regain that form that he had earlier in the year. What a great, great place, a great stage to uh, return to form. Uh, this is a big championship for him. I think uh, to get you know his career going to that next that next level, he's got to you know, you know, start winning these type of championships. And then you've got Dustin Johnson. He's number one in everything. Yes. You know, he just uh, <laughs> continues to impress week after week, year after year. And now this is another big stage for Dustin to you know show his great talents around a golf course that really doesn't suit much of his game, except for he's just really good at everything that he does. This would be a great uh, a, a great notch on his belt right here. A average driving distance, you think, for those three this week? 320 <laughs> some plus on the driving distance holes, which there's not many not many drivers out here for a lot of those yeah. guys, but there will be a few, and I like to go watch the number 11, you know, watch some of those holes where they can take out driver and just, uh, you know, take a lash at it. That is true. A lot of strategy around this golf course. We will get on to that as morning drive continues on this Tuesday morning. We're delighted to be here at TPC Sawgrass, but let's get back to what is happening now and send it to Damon Hack. All right, Carl, the best players in the world are gearing up for a golf course that underwent a six-month renovation from May to November. Every single hole was touched. But how is TPC Sawgrass different now? Jordan Spieth has some thoughts. There's a few changes, changes visually on six and seven, and then the 12th hole is a completely different hole. Um, and then they've also it's a different type of grass on the greens. It's a Tiff Eagle Bermuda now, uh, and it's very pure. Uh, the course is in phenomenal shape. Best shape I've—I mean, I've played it three times. This is the best shape I've ever seen the golf course. Um, the changes I think are, are pretty cool. They're unique. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where the tee's placed back on 12, because that becomes a drivable par four now uh, with the tee up. So um, they—they've got some options. Um, with I think a little bit of softening of slopes for maybe a couple pins we haven't seen in years past. But all in all, uh, they've done a tremendous job with the facilities, best facilities I've, I've seen in golf. And uh, on the golf course, it's as pure as, as anywhere that we've been. Pure, I love that description of a golf course. You can see some of the changes right here, the rebuilt greens, the work on six, seven, 12, and 15 in particular, as well as a revamped practice area. Now, Matt Janella and Jeff Shackelford will get into a little bit more about the changes. Let's talk about the start of this golf course, mm -hmm. Chris DeMarco. It's a par four, a par five, and a par three, as Pete Dye is wont to do. Absolutely, yeah, and you know, the first hole is a great starting hole. Uh, you know, you got that lake on the right. It's not really in play for most guys. You know, as we roll it here, you can see that you just want to hit it just left of that bunker there that you can see. Most guys will get it up there. They'll probably only have eight iron, nine iron, even a wedge into this hole. Some of the longer hitters maybe even sandwich. They might even challenge that right side, try to carry those those right little things, um, little little um, moguls over there. And just put it on the green somewhere. You know, it's a very difficult green. There's a nice slope right through the middle of the green that kind of separates it. 
If you get it on the right tier, it's definitely a birdie hole. Pretty gentle start, I would say. Gentle start. From Pete Dye. Yep, very, yep, very gentle start. They softened the green a little bit now, so there might be some more birdies on that green. Speaking of birdies, the second hole, a par five. Definitely yeah. a scoring opportunity early. You can see how it's a difficult tee ball, though. You've got to work this ball right to left. Okay. So um, a lot of the guys won't even hit drivers, to tell you the truth. A lot of guys will hit a three wood. They'll try to take it right at that one pine tree we can see that kind of sticks out. Turn it left towards that water. Mm -hmm. Come up short. Anywhere from a, a long iron to a mid iron into this green. Difficult green, a lot of um, undulation in the green, but if you can get this ball somewhere up around it, certainly a four here is in play, even a three. So um, to me, the first two holes, this is kind of where you can start getting it at. So um, I like to kind of make this golf course into six three hole challenges. And um, obviously this being the first three. Get it up there, hopefully get a birdie here, maybe under par going into the third hole, which the third hole, to me, is another one of the softer par threes out okay. here. There is some water, but it's way left. There's a bunker left that you probably see. But it's a pretty big green, and it's um, you know, pretty definitely um, accessible. You know, If you can get it on the right tier, the back left pin is a tough pin. Obviously, if you miss it left, you got a pretty tough bunker shot down yeah. there. But if you can get it on this green somewhere, kind of in the middle of that green, you're going to have a good putt at birdie. These first three holes, this is where you can get this golf course. Yeah. I mean, you can actually score out here, and um, if you can get up to a good start, it kind of makes the rest of the course easy because you don't have to push that much. Much more on the changes in just a little bit. Carl Robinson, what else is happening now? Well, you might remember last year, Jason Day became the first man in 16 years and the fifth overall to win the Players' Championship in wire-to-wire -wire fashion. He began the week with a course record tying 63 in the opening round and added a second round 66 to set a new 36-hole championship record of 129. It was a 10th career PGA Tour win for the Australian, who is now back to defend. I kind of do the same as uh, what I did last year, really. Um, no, I played the backside good um, compared to most of the other guys in the week, and that that pretty much what really won me the tournament. Um, you gotta gotta shoot six or six under or, or more to really get ahead of the players, because um, it is a difficult finish. And Jason Day will play in a group of past champions for the first two rounds this week. Yes, he tees off alongside Ricky Fowler and Henrik Sensen at 8.16 a.m. on Thursday in a trio that does include the last two winners of the Players' Championship, of course, with himself and good friend Ricky. Well, for more, we can now welcome in our insider, Tim Rosefort, joins us now. Rosie, the 2016 players marked the end of an incredible stretch for Jason Day. It was his seventh win in a stretch of 17 starts. He's not won since. It's been quite a long time, of course, since we saw him in the winner's circle. Where is he at now? Carl, hard to believe uh, that a, a player with this type of talent uh, has not won in a year, even if even out here in this league in the PGA Tour. But uh, talking to Carl Swadden and listening to Jason last night, who talked to Heather Cox, there's a sense that things are turning here. They're kind of cycling out of where they've been for a lot of reasons. Number one, he's healthy again. If you think back to the end of last year, he had to pull out of both the BMW and the Tour Championship with that back problem. He's healthy. That's good. The problem is he doesn't have Cornell Dreesen to keep him healthy. He was the physio that, that got him to where he had these big years in 15 and 16. He had to go home to South Africa. They're still searching for that, but they're not searching for a driver head anymore. That thing cracked at the U.S. Open. And he got great news from his mom in terms of his prognosis there. Mm -hmm. So his attitude is doing much better. Kyle Swatton said uh, it kind of felt like this way a year ago, really. Nothing that three wins wouldn't solve. It would look, be looked at like a soft opening, just like it was in 2016. Remember, there were a lot of question marks about him in early 16, and then he goes and reels off, wins at Bay Hill, the match play, and then ultimately here in a powerful manner, winning by four shots. Yeah, it's tough when you lose members of your team. It'll be interesting to see how he does react to defending this title this week. Let's turn our attention to the most recent winner on the PGA Tour, and Brian Harmon, who closed with two birdies to capture his second PGA Tour win and beat the likes of Dustin Johnson and John Rahm, of course, at the Wells Fargo Championship. It's not the first time, though, that Brian has, has beaten some big names, is it? No, he's a giant slayer. You go back to his college days at Georgia, 2009 NCAA Championship, Oklahoma State against Georgia. Chris Hack, the Georgia coach, sends uh, sends Brian out to play against Ricky Fowler. He birdies the last three holes to win the match. Five players in those in that competition that day are in the field this week at the Players' Championship. Just an example of the type of talent that he had back then, the type of persona he had as a big time winner. And it goes back even before his college days at Georgia. He was the youngest player ever to play on a Walker Cup team 
18 years old, went undefeated, uh, was picked before he even play, hit a golf shot for Georgia. And his coach, Chris Sack, said he's starting to show the type of things now that I thought I'd see all along. It just took some time. He was smart enough to tap into his camp for some advice. They said, Randy Myers, his strength coach, actually said, you should go talk to Zach Johnson. You got a similar style of game. You're both bulldogs, and you got to think that a lot of that came through in that big win for him over the weekend. Well, we're actually going to catch up with him and Randy Myers on the range here later on today, so it'll be interesting to hear what they have to say. He is closing in on the world's top 50 just outside at the moment. He is in the field of the players this week. What's he like off the golf course, do you know? Well, yeah. It it's, it's different than maybe what you perceive and what you see. His, his mom was a, is a chemist. His, his dad is a dentist. He pulled a, a 386 a grade point average at Georgia, which I'm sure Charlie Reimer is going to make fun of being, of course, <laughs> uh, you know, a Georgia Tech uh, veteran. And uh, again, just smart enough to, to listen to his team when they advise them that, look, you got to quit overanalyzing everything. Just go out and play. And you got to bring some of that Zach Johnson bulldog mentality to the golf course. Well, thanks, Rosie. It'll be wonderful to see how he, uh, I suppose, for plays off the back of that second win on Sunday as he's part of the players' field wow. here this week. Appreciate your notes as always. We'll talk to you again in the next hour, right? Look forward to it. That's right, Carl. Okay, well, with this hour in mind, let's uh, send it back to studio and find out what we've got coming up with Lauren Thompson. Thank you, Carr. We're still on the way on Morning Drive. We're going to welcome in John Daly, fresh from his Insperity Invitational victory, his first title on the PGA Tour champions. We're going to get all the details of what this win really meant to him, plus what he wish he knew in his 20s about the road ahead now as a 51-year-old tour pro. Then we're going to have a checkup with our go-to doctor in studio AP, but this time he's live and on the scene at TPC Sawgrass. Dr. Ara Sapai, he works with some of the most popular names in the game. He's also noticed a few specific traits that are part of the makeup of a champion. So see for yourself as he's gonna walk you through those findings on the show. Plus, David Faraday, is he a busy guy? He had Hale Irwin on the show last night, then he was on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. This morning, however, Faraday has some interesting ideas for what is already one of the biggest challenges on the calendar to making the Players' Championship even more tricky. He's a crazy guy, so maybe you're not surprised it's all ahead today on Morning Drive. Stick around with us. Yeah.